Hello, my name's David Clarkson and I'm the minister at Barclay View Fourth Church. Wherever you're watching from this morning, you're really welcome and we're glad that you've joined us for worship. For those of you who may be new to the church online platform, I want to tell you that you can join in the chat that's going on. You see down the right hand side of your screen. Just type in there any responses you want to make and they'll appear and you can join in in that way. I'm going to put a link to a YouTube video in there so that you can uh, try making something after the service. You notice uh, that there's a request prayer button and that does just exactly what it says. If you uh, would like someone to pray for you, then click the button and it opens up a new chat box between you and one of the hosts who would uh, do the praying with you. We believe that prayer is important. And that nothing is too small or too bad or too big to bring to God. These prayers are totally confidential between you and the host who prays for you. I've got two video adverts to show you and then a song to sing. Hello. This year we need you to give us a hand to let our church community know that Christmas is no cancel. All you have to do is to find some green paper any shade of green, green will do so you need to find as i say any shade of green paper then with a pen go around your hand so you can get a print of your hand shape if you can you get the paper and you get a pair of scissors and you cut around Carefully, because you want to keep your fingers, everything spread out. If you don't feel confident in using the pair of scissors, you can just send the paper and we'll sort something out. We hope that everyone can get involved um, and we're going to use your handprint uh, to create a 3G handmade Christmas tree and as I say, we can use any shade of green and all sides and sizes and shapes of hands so do please get involved and as soon as you can please send your hands to uh hashtag christmas is no council barclay force church one right houses and number eh10 for hr by the 8th of november um we do need uh your hand uh by the 8th of november so we can uh leave it for 72 hours as the government guidelines tell us to do so before we can uh, create the display of the christmas tree um thank you Dad. hello Yes, what is it? This Christmas, can we get an actual Christmas tree? Christmas? It's not even December yet. Far too early to be talking about Christmas and Christmas trees. Now, shoot, I've got important work to be doing. Christmas trees. Dad? Oh. Yes, how can I help? This Christmas, can we please go to the Christmas market? Christmas trees, Christmas market. You know there's going to be no Christmas market this year. Christmas market's cancelled. Now, shoot, I've got important work to do. Christmas trees, Christmas markets. Dad? Well, uh, yes, what is it? For Christmas, can I be a shepherd in the too early for Christmas trees. The Christmas market's cancelled. You know there's going to be no nativity this year. Christmas is cancelled. For Christmas this year, don't be such a grump like my dad. Christmas is never cancelled. And this year, Stephanie's got a brilliant idea for doing the church nativity. Here's my mum to tell us more. She's right. Christmas is never cancelled. What we want to do this year is create our own digital nativity and have as many church families as possible taking part. So, if you are a child in Creche, Quest or Next, then this is for you. We want to give you a scene from the nativity and then you'll use your creative imaginations to create your scene and film it for us. 
Now it might be that you'll all film it as a family or you might prefer to use puppets or toys to act it out. We're only at stage one at the moment. So if you're interested, could you email Stephanie at this address, children at barclayviewforth.org.uk And then we can work out how many people want to take part and give out the scenes. It's going to be great. Ho, ho, ho. ho, ho. Well, today is Remembrance Sunday. That's the closest Sunday to the 11th of November. And, and it's Remembrance Sunday because on the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, at 11am, the First World War ended. A few years later, it was decided that the country needed to take time to stop and to remember the sacrifices that people had made during that time and also the horror that many its soldiers and others had suffered. People hoped that such a thing would never happen again. But in 1939 it did happen again. And actually it has happened in different places across the world every single day since then. There have been people at war with each other. There are some resources 
uh, on the Kingdom Kids web page and the church website if you want to think uh, a little bit more about some of these things. The thing is, you see, we know that war causes suffering for everyone involved. And that even when it's over, those people who have been injured or families who have lost someone in the fighting, they continue to suffer. So why, after all of these years that we stopped to remember, why do we still get involved in war? The Bible says this. Where do you think all these appalling wars and quarrels come from? Do you think they just happen? Think again. They come about because you want your own way. And you fight for it deep inside yourselves. You long for what you don't have and you're willing to kill to get it. You want what isn't yours and you risk violence to get your hands on it. You wouldn't think of just asking God for it, would you? And why not? Because you know you'd be asking for what you have no right to have. You're like spoiled children, each wanting your own way. And that was written by one of Jesus' friends, James. Now, you and I might not actually be willing to kill for something that we want. But we do get angry. And we can be selfish. And if enough people do that, it can cause lots of problems in a country or even between countries, and it could even lead to war. People remember in different ways. Sadako was a young Japanese girl. She was badly affected when the atomic bomb was dropped in Hiroshima at the end of World War II. She was taken to hospital for treatment, and the nurses encouraged her and the other children who were there to accept the medicine that they needed to take by folding it for them in origami figures out of small square bits of paper. Usually the wrappers the medicine had come in. Sadako's favourite was the crane. And an old Japanese legend stated that anyone who faithfully folded 1,000 cranes would have their wish fulfilled. Well, she began folding cranes and her wish was, of course, that she would recover. However, when she realised that she was not going to get better from the effects of the radiation that she had suffered from, she wished instead for peace between the countries of the world. And with every crane that she folded, she whispered, I'll write peace on your wings and you will fly all over the world. She had folded 664 cranes when sadly she died. But the children of Japan learned uh, of Sadako's wish and they too began folding cranes. And every year on Hiroshima Day, that is the 6th of August, you can see thousands of paper cranes suspended from the tower in Hiroshima Peace Park. Now that's the link that's on uh, the chat box there. And it's for a paper crane. Crane is the bird, the crane, not a machine. And here's one in true Blue Peter style that I prepared earlier. The video is just a wee bit too long to show you how to do it now. But I have to say, I could do it so it's pretty easy. It's just folding paper. You need square paper, but it shows you how to get that if all you have even is a bit of A4 paper. We tend to wear poppies or use poppies because during the First World War the ground between the armies was all churned up by the fighting. But poppies grew there. Because they're red like blood they became the symbol that we use at remembrance time. So you could even make a poppy. Take a black olive and some slices of tomato or a black grape and some slices of strawberry and arrange them to make it look like a poppy. Now if you make a crane or a poppy, then send us in a picture so that we can see it. In John chapter 16, verses 32 and 33, Jesus said this, The time will come and is already here when all of you will be scattered. Each of you will go back home and leave me by myself, but the Father will be with me and I won't be alone. I've told you this so that you might have peace in your hearts because of me. While you're in the world, you will have to suffer. But cheer up, I have defeated the world. 
Do you know that means that one day Jesus is going to make everything right? The time will come when there will not be any war or hunger or poverty or sickness anymore. But until that time comes, we need to live well and work for peace. There is a recognised international prayer for peace and I'm going to do, uh, share that with you now. And there are some actions, so we'll just work through it together. It says, Lord, lead me from death to life. From falsehood, so we pretend we're whispering evil things to somebody. Falsehood to truth. Despair. Oh, woe is me. To hope. And we're looking out with hope. From fear. To trust. From hate. To love. From war. To peace. The dove. Doesn't look like a dove in mine, the way I'm doing it, but it's the dove of peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, and our universe. Amen. Really glad that you could join us today. The Remembrance Service starts at 10.50. It's just coming up shortly. And there'll be time for Zoom coffee and chat after that. So feel free to join us there if you can. But whatever you're going to do for the rest of the day, we hope you enjoy it and that you have fun. You might even want to try making a crane or a poppy. We hope to see you next week. Bye for now.